Welcome to Seeing is Believing. This is Monday, March 21st. It is a 4 o'clock session. It will be recorded. And the theme for this convention with Agents of Change, we tried to choose as many old spy movie titles as we could come up with for our sessions. This session was a brainstorm of me, Deborah Carroll Jones, because many years ago at a Caller Lab convention, and you may have been there, Kip Garvey pulled a bunch of us aside after the banquet. We shanghaied a room, and we did an exercise where he was looking to see how callers match people. You have to have some sort of a match that you see before you are able to resolve the square. And so he began to do all kinds of different things, and I thought it was fascinating. We have not done it since, and I was able to uh, corral the EC into having this session today, and we've got a very, very esteemed panel for you. We have, um, to my left, we have a former chairman of the board, Barry Clasper. He's going to be joining us. And then to my right, I have my esteemed husband and former chairman of the board, John Jones, and then to the far right, we have Ed Foote. <laughs> so prepare to be dazzled today. You're going to get some great information. And we're going to have you guys, I've asked for some folks that will, would be willing to be up and dancing a little bit. I've brought my pennies. So those of us that are watching what's happening will be able to see the, uh, the matches, where they are and how they occur, because what I see, I know is not what Barry Clasper sees. All right? And we just see things differently. So I'm going to start with Barry, and he has a wonderful handout for you, and he's going to start this off. Thank you, Deborah. Um, so I'm going to provide the, uh, the theoretical underpinning part of this uh, uh, presentation and while I'm doing that I would like those of you who are going to volunteer to be dancers to uh, please come up and pick up the pennies and stuff we can save ourselves a little time while I'm doing the initial babbling so really what we're talking about here are the techniques that we use to do site resolution correct so when we're doing site resolution we're seeing things in the square and then we're using what we see to make decisions so what, it is, what is it that we're seeing when we're looking in the square? Well, let's, let's think about what a standard resolution method is. If you look at, at the write-ups for the various quote resolution methods, people talk about the two-phase line method and the ocean wave method, and the, you know, there's lots of names. They all, all boil down to this. You're going to create some kind of formation that is usable for whatever you think your method is. You're going to put some people in that formation in a particular place, and then you're going to use some sort of memorized get out from that place. So for instance, you might create uh, an eight chain through formation with a matched couple on the outside, and then you're looking at something on the inside. There's only four possibilities once you've done that. And virtually all the resolution methods involve doing that, putting some people that you know in a particular place in the square, and then that's a snapshot that lets you apply one of four memorized get-outs. Now, most of them also have, you could have another step that you go through to reduce that number to two. So if you're not really quick on seeing the four possibilities, you can look for a smaller decision and work it down to two. If this sounds a little theoretical, it is. It's all in the handout. Now. I just want to give you a sense of, when I talk about a pattern, what do I mean? Could I have the side couples here, square through four? How many people know what I've got? Got a corner box, you can do an element left. How do you know that? Because you saw the square through four and you track that, you know that's where it ends up? Or because you saw something in the square here? So you're seeing the active couples back to back here. So what? Like, 
that's a nice piece of information, but it's not enough for you to, to resolve. So what else are you seeing? So you're also seeing these people, right? So in effect, you're seeing a pattern that looks like these two people on the outside who you know are matched because they haven't moved yet. And then you're seeing that the people in the middle are back to back with their partner. Okay? Everybody slide through. Pass through. Bend the line. Slide through. How many people know what I got now? All right, we've got exactly the same thing. Now, how many know that because you know what an invert and rotate is and you've tracked all that, that stuff? And how many know it because you're looking at the square and you see a pattern? Now, what I did, how many of you normally track the number one couple because you're looking at them, right? When you're, when you're calling, that's usually who you can see, the number one couple. So how many of you would have a problem now because... Or actually, the number one couple's right here, where you can see them. Where you can see them. But if I was calling, I'd be here. And they're on the other side of the square. So for how many of you would that represent a problem that you can't see very well, that you're down calling down on the floor? You can't see two of the people that you're keying on. Would, would that be an issue? You, you. We need to get microphones out there, please. We could have some, some little elves that yeah. would help <laughs> distribute so, the microphones. So you weren't keying on those people. So the fact that, you know, the people right that came right in front of you where it's easy to see weren't ones that you recognized. That would be an issue for you. And, that's, and my point is, I don't really mean to belabor this, but my point is that's because the pattern that you're used to seeing is set up in a certain way. So let me ask a question. So every, does everybody recognize this as a zero box? You could do an element left from here. Now, let me ask the question, what is it that you're actually looking at? We had this box before, and he said that he looks, he's looking at the outside pair. He sees that they're paired, and he's got corner here, and he can see corner's partner standing behind corner. So he's looking at this group of four. How many of you would see this group of four and say, I've got a matched pair on the outside. I've got the inside boy looking at corner. An inside boy is not with his partner. How many would visualize it that way? So you're seeing a different pattern. You're focusing on this box. And you're focusing on this L-shaped thing. So that's what we mean by a pattern. You're looking for a shape of the people that you're used to keying on. Now you're looking for that pattern in a particular formation. This is called an eight chain through formation, correct? How do you know that? You know that because of the spots that they're standing on. In other words, the shape of the square, which is a rectangle. How many formations do we have which are rectangles? Bunches. Everybody face in. Another rectangle, different formation. Everybody touch a quarter. Another rectangle, different formation. Everybody walk and dodge. Another rectangle, different formation, trade by. We've seen this formation before. Everybody's in a different place. So a formation is made up of a shape on the floor and facing directions. The only difference be between all those formations was the, formation, the facing directions of the people relative to one another. Um, everybody face right. You're right. So here we have ocean waves, another rectangle. The only difference between the ocean wave and what we had before is the direction that people are facing. So the shape and the direction that people are facing is part of the formation. Another thing that let's have um, everybody hinge, by, so you've got to hinge by the left hand, please. And the girls, you turn back. And what do we got here? Got another rectangle, it's organized differently. And we have Another thing that we often key on is the relationship of the boys and the girls. So here we have sashayed couples. So if you recognize this as sashayed couples, then you've keyed on another element of a pattern. You have sashayed couples, which is an important thing to know as you're trying to recognize the pattern. How many of you would be able to look at this and see if somebody is in sequence? 
Who's in sequence? Is everybody in sequence? Just the boys? Just the girls? Nobody? How many of you would be able to look at this if they didn't have pennies on and tell me that? I'm one of those people that can't see sequence. If a resolution method says, are they in sequence or are they not in sequence, and I have to be able to detect that, I throw it away. I, I, can't, I can't figure out sequence fast enough to be able to resolve on a moving square. I am so glad to hear that. <laughs> so sequence is another element of the pattern that you need to be looking at. So the only reason I'm going through all this is to give you a sense of what it is that we're asking you to be looking for as we, we talk in the future. Now, remember uh, the steps that I, I mentioned as you go through a resolution? You're going to create a usable formation. You're probably going to make a normal arrangement. You're going to pair some people, and you're going to put those people in a certain place in your formation, and then at that point, Regardless of how you got there, the specific calls that got you there, you always ever only have four possibilities. That's what all these resolution methods are doing. And so if you, have a mem if you can recognize those four possibilities at that point, and you have a memorized get out for each one of them, you're golden. Now the memorized get, up, get out might be three calls, four calls, five calls. It doesn't matter. You snapshot it on a particular thing that you set up, and then you knew where to go from there. So the point that I would like to make that's kind of beyond just the theory here is that as you work your way through a resolve, so you've been calling for a while, something happens, and you decide now it's time to get out, and you look at the square, and you have, you have no idea where you are. You've got to start working your way through your re resolution method, whatever you think that is. My point is that at each point, at each step, in that resolution method, you're also keying on patterns. It's not just at the end where you see the one that says, okay, I know the four possible get outs from here. At each step, you're keying on a pattern that tells you what is possible for the next step. So I'd like to illustrate that, and to make sure I don't mess it up, I'm gonna actually read it. Could you guys square your sets, please? What did I do with my... Oh yeah, that's what you put it back together on me? These are my speaker notes. Don't do that. So, this is going to be weird. In fact, Ed, when he saw what I was going to do, he said, what are you doing that for? This is all supposed to be mainstream calls. But it's, it's to make a point. So, head square through four. Everybody touch a quarter. Centers trade. Girls trade. Centers run. New centers half circulate. Okay, how many know what this is called? So this is an hourglass. If you dance the dance, you've seen these things before. And so if we're talking about mainstream get-outs, why should I worry about an hourglass? Well, the fact is that those of us who do call advanced and other programs have a habit of getting going when we're, you know, we're really rolling along and sight calling and you're thinking about something in the back of your head while other things are coming out of your mouth. You had that, you, have you had that sensation? And suddenly you look up and, oh, geez, what have I done? <laughs> there they are. So I'm going to very quickly walk through the steps of getting out of this mess and resolving. Now, let's say that my resolution method is I want to put a matched pair on the in fact, I want it to be my key couple. Let's make that number one couple. I want to put my key couple on the outside of a beginning double pass-through setup. And if I can do that, then I've only got my four possibilities. Right? That's a specific setup with a match pair on the outside. So I'm, I'm golden if I can do that. So how do I get out of this mess with just mainstream stuff? So the first thing I focus on is the shape of the square. And I say, oh, geez, what have I done? I can't do anything with that shape at mainstream. So I want to change that shape into something a little bit more usable. So that's, I'm working on the first part of my resolution, which is create a usable formation. Well, so I, I would look at this and say, well, 
I know that if I have those very center two boys cast three quarters, I will get something that's a little closer to something I understand. So what have I got now? Interlocked diamonds, right? Does everybody see interlocked diamonds? If you call C1, that pop right out at you. But if you didn't, you're probably still saying, oh, geez, what have I got now? And the ends are standing there wondering what you're going to do. Well, I can see now when I look at this and I snap on the shape, I know that if I have the center four, center line of four to a half tag, go ahead. Well, this is something a little more usable for me. So I've got two face lines. Their arrangement isn't wonderful for me at this point, but I got some two face lines. I can work with that. Now my resolution method says I want to work out of waves just because that's what the resolution method said. So I've got to create some waves. What's the easiest way to create a wave from here? Well, that's one way. I'm going to do half tag the line just because I like that. So everybody half tag the line. So now I've got right hand waves, yay! Except I got a problem. I got the same sexes together. I had, how did I get out of this? Oh, yeah. yeah. So I've got the same sexes together. I want to create normal right hand waves. So let's have the centers circulate. That's a pattern that I can see that if I have the centers circulate, now I've got boys and girls together. I no longer have the sexes together. Everybody hinge. Ah, normal right hand waves. So now I have accomplished the first couple of steps of my resolution method. Now I want you to bear in mind, you're going to see things as I go through this and think, well, why didn't he stop there? It's because I'm a newer caller. I'm grinding my way through this resolution method. I'm looking at each little step along the way and looking for the patterns that that step involves and then taking an action, seeing what I get, make another, another decision based on the new pattern that I get. So now the next step says I have to pair my keys. Right? My keys are number one couple over there. So I look at that pattern. I can see where my number one man is. I can see where my number one lady is. So an easy way to pair them is end circulate. Let's do that. And now my resolution method says, OK, I've got my key man and his lady paired. I want to put them on the outside of an eight chain through. Well, recycle is going to put them on the outside. Let's do that. Recycle. Or actually, it's not the outside of an eight chain through. I want the outside of the beginning double pass through, which I don't have. Right? I've got an eight chain through. So I want to get them on the outside, but I want the centers to be facing in because that's what my resolution method says. Everybody square through three. Outsides trade. There I am. So I've ground my way laboriously through my resolution method, and I now have the setup that I'm going to take. At this point, how many possibilities are there? If you didn't know where anybody was, you could look and say, I've got my match pair, my key men, and key people on the outside. The centers can only be one of four ways, because I know I've got a normal arrangement. So it can only be one of four ways. I can look at this, and based on that, I can do a resolution. So I look at this, and I can see that if I have the centers pass through and swing through, I have a right and left grant. Because that's me memorized resolution that I have for, th for this. OK, so I have just ground my way through all these steps. At each step along the way, I was keying on some patterns and making a decision based on that pattern. So now I want to sort of illustrate that because of the way I was forcing myself to look at the patterns, I walked by some things. Let's have the centers trade. Where am I going? Yeah. 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 Let's have the centers trade. Yeah, everybody swing through. I wanted to make sure I put myself in the right position and scoot back. And I'm assuming you've got a mainstream floor that's strong enough that can do a scoot back with mixed sexes coming in, you know, that kind of stuff. Now, a lot of you may have noticed this, especially since they've got 
bibs on and they were standing that way for a long time, what have you got? You got everybody matched, everybody's with their partner, but they're out of sequence. So because I was laboriously grinding my way through my, my get out, I didn't even see that, right? I was focused on the key couple over there. I was trying to, going to try and get them to the outside. I didn't even notice what was going on with the other people that I knew. So from here, there's other get outs that you could use, right? You could recycle, sweep a quarter, circle left, element left. All you have to do is reverse the sequence. Let's have the ends uncirculate. Lee wrote that one, too. <laughs> How many of you noticed this? How many of you can see that if I had the center's trade, I could recycle, and I have an element left? Now, that's a pattern that I walked right by, and actually a lot of callers would walk right by that, because if you're focused on your key couple, you're trying to pair number one couple, you might not notice that the other people that you know could be more easily paired. And I called for a long time before I got to the point where I could see enough of the square fast enough to realize I could pair this couple or that couple, and I could kind of look for it all at the same time. That takes a while to master that. So we've got a case here. Let's just do it so you, the, you, everybody can see it. Girls trade, recycle. And there's our element left. Sure, go ahead. And square your sets again. So my point there is in the handout, there's actually a further one. There's about step number two. There was a get out right there. But it involved a pattern that very few people would probably be keying on as they're grinding through one of these resolution methods. So now at this point, what I want to do is I'm going to set up that that um, hourglass thing again, because John, when he saw my handout, looked at that and said, well, I've got a different way that we could approach that. So I'll set that up, and John can, can carry on. I, I have to give him something to talk with? <laughs> okay. So let me make sure I set it up exactly the same way I had it before. Head square through four. Touch one quarter. Centers trade. Girls trade. Centers run. And new centers one half circulate. So now John's going to show you a different approach. And I learned to sight call from the man who invented it. It was Les Gocher. And he taught me all kinds of things about sight calling. I have decided over the last... 15 years that maybe we needed to do some other things other than sight calling, regurgitating calls or whatever it might happen to be. So I look for different things. Normally I will key off the number one and the number four couple, but if we happen to have a square that has an outstanding couple in it in costume, I will probably pick them and his corner and her partner, whomever that might be in a clockwise direction. Then I watch at least three squares, and I will pick out the same couples in each square so I, my mind don't have to crisscross or flip-flop somewhere along the line. Then I start looking for whatever. I look for either pair, either one of the, like the number one couple or the number four couple, or some type of get-out that would do that. And when I saw Barry's formation that he has here of this hourglass, Here's what I saw to start getting ready to get out pretty darn quick because he's called several calls to get to this point. Center's hinge, the center boy's hinge, that line do a half tag, and I got my number one man and his partner together. Well, I ain't going to let them get away from each other. Tag the line. Tag the lines are great tool to be working with. Face right. He said, oh, my God, you know, all at once you look, 
one couple's, two of the couples are one half arrangement and the other two are normal. I don't care. That's okay with me. All right. Uh, Ferris wheel. I'll do it that way. Zoom. Center's box of that. What did I do then? I normalized those two that were one half arrangement. Did I not? Okay. Square through three. I'm just that quickly to a resolution. Alley man left. And come back. Square you sit. Cut across. Promenade home. Whatever it takes. And that's how I look at the situations. I try to see whatever I can see as quickly as I can to know that I'm going to be able to resolve the square. Now, uh, Barry was saying that he had a problem seeing sequence. Deborah has a problem seeing sequence. I've never had that problem. I don't know why, but I don't. I can see it real easily. I don't care whether they got pennies on or not because I'm, I've got it locked in my mind who they are and where they are. And uh, um, make me uh, partner lines. Number four couple back out over here. Number two, you're over there. No, that's a wrong direction. Get back around here. Y'all got to learn how to make lines. Now, that's the standard way to make lines. <laughs> so the audience can see what you're doing. All right, that, that's the main thing. And, and working from partner lines is really, really easy. All you got to do is look and see whether they're in or out of sequence. It's, it's not anything difficult about it at all. But the magic modules that we use, if you don't know these, then you need to have them in your memory bank and not ever forget them. Here's one of them. Touch a quarter. Circulate. And the boys run. Automatically converted that partner line to a corner box. It'll do it every time. And it'll, it'll rotate it around to the places that you need to be. Swing through Girls circulate, boys trade, boys run, bend the line. I don't have to look. I know that they're in a partner line because of these known facts that I have in my memory bank. It's really, really easy to keep up with. Uh, touch a quarter, circulate, boy run, right and left through. Now, that magic module that I used a while ago to get them back with their partner was the swing through, in, circulate, uh, centers trade, and centers run. Right? That would be a, in, uh, it would be a swing through and an AC doocy And then centers run if you're in, in the plus program. But did you notice what I did? I took them out of sequence. After I did the touch a quarter, circulate, boy, run, I did a right and a left through. Watch what happens with that same module again. Swing through, girls circulate, boys trade, boys run, bend the line. Now who are they with? I don't have to look. I know they're with their opposite because that right and a left through caused it to be that way. And when I'm calling or sight calling or module calling, and I know that I've gotten them to this point with the opposite lady. Here's the get out that Les Gocher showed me in 1957. Left square through four. Give a left to the next and you pull her through and a right to your partner and you pull her by an alley man left. If you follow my direction. Back up to home, you're close enough to it. So that get out, I still, what was that left, left square through four and give a left to the next and pull her by and a right to your partner and pull her by? That was way before we ever had trade by. All it was was a left square through, a trade by and a pass through. Today's choreography. But look how unique that get out was with what I did. And that's the type of thing that I can see. And the reason I can see uh, four ladies chain across and make me a uh, facing lines. Y'all come over here. There you go. Oh, boy, they're getting good. You know it. Look at there. 
the reason I can see that I, they have their opposite lady, my key man, his partner, diagonally across the square from him. Has to be his opposite lady. Can't be anybody else with symmetric choreography. My secondary man right here, his partner's diagonally across the square from him. Can't be anybody else but his opposite with symmetric choreography. All I've got to do is look at sequence, and they're automatically in sequence right now. So what's that get out? Left square through four. I'll do modern terminology. Trade by, pass through, alley man left. Come back and take about two steps in your home. That's the kind of things that I can see. Deborah, are you going to talk? You wanna... um, did you have something quick? You... Okay. Yes, I get to talk. <laughs> <laughs> When I learned to call, I've been calling 34 years, I was put almost immediately into sight calling. And the only relationships that I could see were partner and corner. So for me to have the really slick get out that he just used, forget it. I couldn't see it. Um, there's some really good get-outs from the right-hand lady that I could never use because I sure couldn't see her. And what I have learned is that just because I see one thing doesn't mean I can't create the other. All right? Um, heads lead right, circle to the best-looking lines of four you ever made in your lives. All right. We all agree this is partner line, Okay. Um, when I watch someone in the square, when I'm cueing on someone, you heard us talk a lot about one and four. You hear the boys talk about one and four. And this is great. This guy is tall, okay? He's easy to see. Nice. <laughs> A friend from Alaska. And, but what I'm cueing on is the girl, okay? This is the part I learned to dance. Hello? This is the part I'm going to track, all right? But he comes for free because she buys his, his ties that he wears. So I know that, you know, I just have to watch her. And then I look for her corner. Okay, this is how I track. And she comes for free, all right? I know who, she, who he's with. The way that I can tell sequence from here, now watch this. Men, if you are queuing on one in four, your primary person and your secondary person, for them, to, for you to be able to see that they are in sequence, the secondary person is to the right of the primary man. Are you, are you seeing this? Okay. That's not what I see. Uh-uh. Not if I'm cueing on my girlfriend here. Okay. My secondary guy is to the right. All right. You talk about having trouble with sequence. And so I learned a trick. I don't have to worry about sequence here because I can see it. You know what I see? My key person is in between partner and corner. And if that's where they are, I'm in sequence. Now, what about your guy, though? What if he's your key person? Does it work both ways? All your little heads should go like this, up and down. Because it does, okay? He's between partner and corner. If we squished it together into a circle, it all works. That was such a relief for me. But I wanted to move on to being able to use these really cool get outs. It's nice when you're first calling, the dancers are th so excited if you could just get the corner back to them. They're thrilled to death. But after a while, they'd like to have more than score through three to an element left. Or Barry was sharing a little uh, tale with me that when he, well, he learned to call challenge first, and a lot of callers have done that. When he went to a mainstream dance, he said, I don't know why, but I always wanted to resolve to a right and left grand. Well, that's what they, they did up there, and they liked it. At mainstream, they're a little bit uncomfortable sometimes with, with resolving to a right and left grand. But I want to be able to have those when I have that really good mainstream floor, and they've let me bring them along, and they trust me, and then I can slam out there with a terrific get out. But if I can't see it, can't use it. 
So what I want to do during my little segment here, I want to set up a couple of things and show you what I see. It may not be what you see. And then we have a game we're going to play. Okay? All right, so we have partner line. All right? One day when John and I were driving down the road, I said, I want to use a get out that is square through two, trade by, go right and left grand. That's what I want. What do you have to do when you start with the get out first? You got to moonwalk yourself back to the place where you can launch it, correct? Am I correct? Okay. So John was helping me, and I'm writing down the choreography. And I said, okay, I've got it. I know what I need to have. I need an opposite lady line, out of sequence, half sashayed. <laughs> I'm not going to see that if I stood there and looked at it for a thousand years. I'm not going to see that. Who's going to see that? Jerry Story would see that. John would see that. Not me. I don't see that. But I can make it. And I use a module to get there. Okay, so we have our partner lines. Pass the ocean. All eight circulate. Who do they have to have? They have to have their opposite. It cannot be anything else. And what happened to the sequence state? Are they in or are they out? They're out because a past the ocean changes the sequence. Okay? All right. Single hinge, and the girls run. Ta-da! <laughs> I made it. Now, the first module I wrote, I must have had 12 calls to get there. And I was happy to have that. At least I had something. But Because uh, I was looking for flow. I wanted it to work. Then I thought, okay, now shorten the module up. And this is what I got. So square through two, trade by, get him the, going the other way, slap him in the face, and a right and a left grand, and a grand and a right and a little, 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 little. Okay. And you can ski doodle on home. All right. So that's how I have started plugging in these really cool get outs. But what I've discovered is the more I make this, the more I see it on the fly. How cool is that? So it's beginning to become something I can recognize. Um, heads, just pair off and face your corner. Okay. Uh, right and left through. There left. Couple circulate. Bend the line. Okay. What I was trained to see, down this line, right? I look linear. And what I have in this line is a corner affiliation, all right? What I see here and what I call it is a Dixie Grand line. Because if I call pass through with a wheel and deal, I can use Dixie Grand, all right? So this is how I have identified this. This is a Dixie Grand line. Right and left through, everybody. But this, this is my line. <laughs> this is the one I can see. I can make it. I can make it and unmake it. I can, I can recognize it if it happens because I'm just bebopping along. I own this line. All right? And in this line, we have a paired couple to the left and the unpaired couple to the right. Because I know if I have them here and I call pass through with a wheel and deal, it's square through three to an element left. Okay? So this is my line. I look linear. Here's my corner. And here's where I kind of got, Boop. Jerry Story said, you got a right-hand lady set up. And I said, what? <laughs> no, I don't. Chair, corner, hello, here they go. Pass through, wheel and deal, square through three, corner. Corner, corner. He said, Deborah, look across. If corner is in the line, who has to be across? Right hand lady. I didn't know that. I had my line. That's what I saw. That's what I owned. But now I also know that I've got right hand lady. So if I've got my line, here's a great get out. I love to use if the floor can handle it. 
All right. Past the ocean. Swing through. Boys are going to stay in the middle. Hint, hint. All eight circulate once and a half. And a run on a grand around. You're running a grand old. Ah. Oh. And the crowd goes wild. Okay. <laughs> Can you use it if you can't see it? No. So here's the game I want to play. Because I want to know what you see. What I see is different than what John sees. John helped me to begin to recognize opposite lady. Because if I saw something where nobody went together, oh, baby, I got out of that as fast as I could. I wasn't comfortable there at all. I wanted people that went together. Now I'm okay. So that's been growth for me. 34 years, I'm still growing. I'm still excited about learning these new things. But I want to know what you see. So if we have a couple of people that would play the game, what I want to do and what I'm looking for, I don't want to try to trick you. That's not, that's not the purpose of the game. I want a caller who will stand up here with their back to the square and let me move the people around. You can't see where I have left them. Then I will tell you what formation and arrangement you are in. So if I, for example, if I put them in right-handed ocean waves, I'm going to tell you you have right-handed ocean waves with the girls in the middle. So mentally you will know where you, where you are, callers, correct? Okay. I want you to already have a calling plan in mind when you turn and look at the square. And as soon as you see some kind of a match, you stop. Stop calling right there. Don't resolve. Stop and tell me what you see. Because what I see, my Jerry seeing right-hand lady, I wouldn't have known that woman if she moved in, okay? <laughs> but I knew corner. So I want to know what you see. And that way we can help each other. Like if I'm only looking linear, but somebody else looked in the box, that's going to help me to see it in the future. Are you willing to, to participate and play that game just a little bit? Uh, like I said, I'm not trying to trick you. Who would volunteer to be the first person? Peggy, thank you. Come on. <laughs> Bob, you want to come? Peggy, do you want to give it a shot? And just, now, Peggy's a fairly new caller. Okay? But this is wonderful because I want to know what the new caller sees. Okay, girl, here's the hot seat right here. There's a trap door right there. <laughs> and there's alligators under just waiting for you. All right, so... She doesn't know what we're going to be doing, all right? So I'm going to start moving people around. Yeah, it has to be silent, okay? He's like a bull out of a chute. Hang on to him, will you? All right. Okay, girlfriend. <laughs> you have... Yes, you have a right-handed ocean waves who parallel right-handed ocean waves. Boys are together and girls are together. Okay? You got it? You got the picture in your mind? All right, turn around and start calling. On the mic. On the mic. Um, hinge and swing through for me. Do you see a match? Uh, not yet. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Keep going. No, keep going. No, keep I going shouldn't ahead. have done keep... the swing swing through again. Okay. Keep going. Um, boys circulate. Oh, sorry. I've got. Not, I've not even seen what you guys are. Yeah, <laughs> I've got girls together again. Um, no, I'm just not. Okay. Uh, split circulate. That gets me better. There you go. There you go. Now I can recycle. Okay. Recycle. Just let me know when you see a match. Uh, yeah. See, I've got those three together, but not in a position that I know where to get them. But out. you see a match. Yes, because I've got Chris is with her, both her partner and her corner in that box. Okay. Did you, see, how, did you guys see that? How many of you saw that right out of the gate? Some of us did, some of us didn't. Because we're looking and resolving in a different way. And all I want you to do is stop as soon as you've seen a match, all right? And she saw it. She got them matched up. Now, she may have a way to 
get them to the setup that she needs from there. That, and I'm not interested in, in going okay. through that journey. I just wanted to see when you saw a match and where they ended up being. Okay. Thank you so much, Peggy, okay. for being my volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who else would like to take a shot? Okay, Oz is going to take a shot, and we need a guy, please, to come and fill. It's just easier for everybody to track if we have all the. Okay, square your sets. I told you I wasn't going to be that mean, you meanies out there. You have facing lines. Boys are together. Girls are together. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll come around here. You have facing lines. Boys together. Girls together. Pass through, wheel and deal. Girls square through three. Star through. And we got a match. There you go. He saw it. Yay! Good for you, Oz. All right. And I think that I saw one before he got there, but I've got 34 years on the mic. Okay, some of us are going to see it faster. I think that was terrific. One more, and then I'm going to turn it over to Ed Foote, and God knows what's going to happen then. Okay, so one more person want to step up and give it a shot? Oh, come on, Jay. All right. <laughs> okay. But now, wait a minute. I'm left-handed. Part of the reason I did it that way is that I already had the full sequence in my head before I turned around with the pass-through wheel and deal. If the girls were in the, in the center, then I'd do the square through three. If the boys were in the center, I would do a zoom, and then they have the girls square through three, and then do the star through, and that way I would have two face lines. And that, from that point, I knew that I was going to have something that I could get a match with very easily. What he's saying, uh, uh, if I can recap, he normalized it. He pictured in his mind something that was not quote-unquote normal. The girl wasn't on the right side of the guy. It was a little hinky. And then he had a sequence that he knew would normalize that. And from there, the match, almost sometimes it just happens. It's like magic. All right. Are you ready, my man? Okay. I hope. Okay. Uh, I'll do something like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, Okay. I made you a pretty, Jay. I'll just bet. <laughs> you have ends out inverted lines. Are you three? One, two, three. I'm so sorry. My bad. You used to have... But now you have you have three in one lines. You do have boys together and girls together. Okay? Wonderful. All right. And all we need is a match, huh? That's right. As soon as you see one. Wow. Uh, <laughs> all you little monkeys out there, I hear you chattering. You you see you're seeing it, aren't you? Okay. I mean you see yours. All right, all right. let's see. Uh, everybody, uh, half tag your line. Good. Uh, center's trade. There's all kinds of matches. Okay, okay. All right. All kinds of matches. He saw a match. Did you see it before you had the center's trade? Okay. Center's trade. I saw it here. Why? Because my mind works linear. Okay. If I had been looking in the box, I wouldn't have seen anything. But because I have a tendency to look linear, I saw the match right there. They're, they're together. He has got 
his girl, and he has got his girl. All right, that's what I saw. And maybe some of you did as well. Very good, Jay. Thank you for volunteering. Give our, our square a nice hand for participating here, please. And I am going to turn it over to Ed Foote. Yeah, we'll need, we'll need you again. Just... First of all, I put a whole bunch of handouts back there. Some of you got them. They're mainly for dancers. Most of them are for dancers. If you like what's on them, feel free to make copies and distribute them uh, wherever you want. Also, the four, the four site calling uh, write-ups that I've written that Colorado has used for years, isolated site, two-face line site, facing line site, the fundamental methods are all back there, plus the article I wrote entitled How to Remember Primary and Secondary Couples in Three Squares which John, John said he does. So that's back there, too, and it's, just, it's really just training your mind to do this. A lot of people say, I'm lucky to remember one square. Well, it's very easy to remember three squares if you follow the little steps that are in the, in the setup there. Um, we've been looking here at how quickly we can identify the corner, which really comes down to speed. I want to be able to get to a left alamand fast. And I want to be able to get there fast for two reasons. One, if I've just given the dancers this great piece of choreography and I've built them up, now I want to hit them with the left alamand while they're right up here. But if it takes me a while, 30 seconds, a minute, to get to the left alamand, now it's just another left alamand. They've come down off of the mountain of the high of the choreography that I've given them. Second, if for some reason, my fault or the, or, or, the, or the floor, that most of the floor is broken down, then I want to be able to get out right away to get everybody dancing again. I have always maintained that a caller should be able to resolve from any normal setup, lines, waves, two-phase lines, and so on, in 12 to 15 seconds from the snap of a finger. You're calling along, somebody stands behind you, they snap their fingers, you should be able to get out in 12 and 15, between 12 and 15 seconds. I decided to test this theory out last spring. Ken Rattucci was in Pittsburgh, and he was doing a caller seminar. So we decided to test this theory out, first to see who was the better site caller, who, who could do it fastest, and second, to see if my theory really was correct. So we had the callers pre-set up six setups that, that like, like uh, Deborah was doing there, ahead of time. Couldn't be asymmetric, had to be symmetric. And then we would both go out of the room. Then one of us would come back in the room with our head down, and then they would say, raise your head. They'd immediately punch the timer and start, and we'd see how fast we could do it. It, um, it was a tie, three to three on, on the total of the six. But what I found interesting was the 12 to 15 second rule was maintained on basic simple choreography of lines, two-face lines, uh, ocean waves, and so on. But when it got to a setup like Barry showed of an hourglass or maybe somebody, somebody actually set up a galaxy, these are not used at mainstream. By the way, we were, we were only allowed to use mainstream and plus calls to get out. But you can set up galaxies and hourglasses at mainstream by manipulating the dancers. When we got to that, we found it took between 18 and 24 seconds to get to a left alamand. So I've now revised my theory. If it's a simple setup, 12 to 15 seconds still goes. But if it's complicated, then 18 to 24 is okay. The biggest problem that callers have in resolving is not knowing what calls do. That's the biggest problem. And even experienced callers 
Ken Ricciucci was mentioning in another session, in his caller schools, he's finding more and more callers that have been calling five, seven years, and they're still hesitant on formations and identifying what to do. In order to be an effective, fast site caller, you have to know what every call does instantly. So, for instance, let's, let's do a test. We're going to do a test here. I'm going to give you the name of the formation. Then I'm going to give you the name of the call, and you instantly shout it out. Okay, don't wait. As soon as I give the name of the call, give me the resulting formation. The formation is parallel ocean waves. The call is recycled. How many didn't say anything? Or how many hesitated a second? You hesitated a second, too slow. Too slow. What... Um, um, Let's do another one. Let's do a, um, from an eight chain through. When I give you the name of the call, you immediately tell me the formation. Center's in. Okay. Okay. If you got it in one second, wonderful. If it took you two seconds or two and a half to think of it, you need to go back and do some more work on, on, a de on knowing ahead of time what the ending formation will be. Now, callers will say, especially newer callers, it's very discouraging. Newer callers go to, go to a caller's school, and they get all this practice, and then they come home, and they don't have anywhere to call. Or maybe they get to call uh, once every other week at their home club uh, because a regular caller lets them call an occasional guest tip. But they don't have any way to practice. So, therefore, they say, well, I know that if I called regularly, after a couple years, I might be able to respond quickly as to what the ending formation is. But how do I do this? I'm, I'm lucky to call four tips a month. Well, here's the way you do it. You make yourself up charts that, that it lets you identify the correct answer for whatever formation is named. So, for instance, let's say we're going to give an example. The call is... Recycle. That's your headline call. And now you're going to have two columns, a left column and a right column. The left column is starting formation, and the right column is ending formation. So the call is recycle. Line number one, starting formation, ocean waves. Ending formation, you write down, they chain through. Line two, starting formation is tidal wave. Line two, the ending formation is facing lines. You do that for every place you can call recycle. And now you do it for every call. You have a different sheet for every call. Now, granted, it takes a little bit of time to make this up. But now, if you look at those sheets regularly, you don't even have to be calling, and this will, this, you will absorb this. And the neat thing about having all these sheets is that you can get your partner, wife, anybody. They don't even know how to square dance. They can test you. Just give them the sheet and say, you name the call and the starting formation and just pick, pick one starting formation and see if I know the answer. That's how you do your tests when you're driving to the dance. The partner's with you. Hand them the sheet. Maybe they don't even square dance. Doesn't make any difference. You got, you got your sheets. That's how... You learn these ending formations when you don't have a lot of places to call. Any comments on this, what I've just said so far? So, far? The, so the two biggest problems the callers have in resolving is, number one, not knowing what calls do because it takes them too long to know what the calls do. And second, second, do you have Barry's sheet there? You have that handout that Barry gave? At the very start, under number one, subsection B and C. And for those listening on, on the um, MP3, well, we'll give you the B, uh, B says uh, normalize and C says go with, uh, pair somebody. The biggest problem I see that people have with calling, they flip them. 
they reverse those two. So they try to look at faces first, and then they try to normalize. That is a giant no-no. Always remember, you normalize first, then you go to faces. If you try to go to faces first, you will be frustrated. It'll take you forever to get to a corner, and you'll just be constantly frustrated. So if you're new at this at all, remember, always normalize. Even if you're an experienced caller, you must normalize first, unless you have a, a genius brain like Barry. who do, <laughs> He can do it, but I can't. If I have some weird formation out there and, and I'm, it's time for me to resolve, I'm going to normalize the thing first before I do my resolve. I'm not going to try to resolve out of some oddball formation and flip the whatever into a right and left grant. I'm, I can't do that. So I'm going to normalize first. So remember that rule. And if you're ever talking to new callers, that's the key to tell them. You normalize first, then you go to faces. Next, there are two things that are vital for you to memorize. And the callers working to psych call always have trouble with. Number one, how do you get if you have opposite lines, opposite partner lines, which we had here, everybody has their opposite. How do you get from that to normal lines? Somebody's tell me. Somebody shot that out. Well, we don't have pass the ocean, all eight circulate. What I do is I say pass the ocean, all eight circulate to a slide through. Now I have facing lines. But if I don't want the facing lines, if I want an ocean wave, then it's past, you, uh, it's past the ocean, all eight circulate. But it's nice to have two. It's nice to have two options. You're not doing the same thing all the time. So I tell people, memorize these four calls. Star through, pass through, trade by, star through. Starts and ends with a star through, pass through, trade by in the middle. Memorize that. Memorize those two things, and I have no problem anytime you have everybody in lines with opposite. The second thing that callers have trouble with is if it's facing lines and the same sex is in the middle. What do I do? And they're pass through and wheel and deal and doing all this stuff. I tell them, this is what you do. You do it all the time. Pass through and tag the line. And now you pick a direction, left or right. I don't care which direction it is. One of them will give you a normal, quote, boy, girl, two-face line. The other one will give you a half sachet two-face line, but that's okay. You can bend the line box and that right and left through. That's how you get out of a line with same sexes in the middle. You pass through and tag the line and pick a direction. Now, if you're alert, you can pick the direction as they're doing the tag the line that will give you the normal couple. So that's wonderful. That's, that's, a, that's a bonus. Okay, let's get the square up a second. I really like the way that Chris was escorted to her spot on the floor by her partner. Yes. <laughs> Very courteous. Okay. I'm going to show you something that I just think is kind of neat so you can steal it from me. Um, if uh, a lot of you use the two-face line get out, so let's have the um, heads, pass, heads pass the ocean, extend, uh, girls trade, all eight circulate. Okay, so let's, let's start our two-face line get out. Let's say I'm, go I'm going to do my normal step-by-step -step plotting along. Swing through, boys trade, and the boys run because I'm matching couple number one. Now, don't do this. The next steps in the two-face line resolve. The next step says we want the primary couple in the same line with secondary girl. And if they're not there, we put them there. So we do the couple circulate. Then we do a wheel and deal. Don't do any of this. And then we see what we have. And in this case, of course, we would have a left out of man. Here's the neat thing you can steal. 
any time you have a two-phase line and your primary couple is the trailing couple and the other couple doesn't have their partner, secondary doesn't have their partner, primary couple is together, do this. Half tag, go, face right, pass through, right and left grand. Now, for those calling advance, it would be a turn and deal pass through right and left grand, so I like to use my advanced knowledge to, to work it in there. And normally they'll do that. Any comments or questions on, on what I've said so far? Yeah. Um, one, one suggestion to you folks with, with the um, idea of creating the file of what can you do from this call, what happens if I call this, I believe that the call analysis sheets are still available on the Caller Lab website. And that gives you sort of an, an outline of how to go about building yourself this library. Yeah, the call analysis sheet is good. It'll give you the FBI version on every call. But here, all we need, all I'm looking for is starting any information. That's it. Now, if you take a, you can use the call, the, um, the call analysis sheet, I don't know what it gives columns like that. So, but the call analysis sheet is available. Any comments on resolving any, let's say this, any problems you're having with site calling fast, we're going to resolve them right now. We'll need somebody with a mic. Right there. Nobody's having any problems. Wow, are you good? I'm so impressed. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> You're what? <laughs> we're we've got we're at five oh eight. Just letting you know okay. the time. Okay. Oh, oh okay. Um, let let me show you one other thing. Let's have the um, side star through, pass through, go right and left through, veer left. Again, we're working the two face line resolve. I love Dixie Grand get-outs because it's forward, ongoing motion. I try to call a whole bunch of Dixie Grands during the course of the night. And if you're using the two-face line resolve, you're never very far from a Dixie Grand get-out, especially in this case when one couple is matched and the other couple isn't matched. Anytime you have a matched couple and a mismatched couple, you're, you're seven seconds away from a Dixie Grand get-out. So from right here, if I'm going to call Dixie Grand Get Out, let's do a couple circulate, Ferris wheel. Now here, one call gives me a Dixie Grand Get Out. Remember this spot because I'm going to bring you back to this spot, okay? We know, a lot of us know that from here, the setup for Dixie Grand is have this, don't do this yet, have the centers do a right and left through, which puts the primary couple in front of the secondary girl. That's the parent position for a Dixie Grant, right? And got that? So do I want to call centers right and left through Dixie Grand? Well, because it's smoother to say, and remember this spot because you're going to come back to it, centers square through, go, and on the third hand start a Dixie Grant, and that dance is much better. This stuff is great on paper, you know? Okay, back to, the, back to the spot I told you to remember. Okay. Um, do a Zoom. Here's another thing. Steal this. And this applies whether you're site calling or module calling. The rule is... Any time the centers can pass through Alamand left, that happens all the time in module calling, in facing lines site, comes up in two-face line site. Any time the centers can pass through Alamand left, instead call this. Double pass through, go. Dixie Grand, leaders are right pull by, everybody left pull by, everybody right pull by, Alamand left. Did you notice because I knew it would be unusual for them, I raised the volume of my voice, which was like a hand right in the small of their back, pushing them through. Now, the third or fourth time, I wouldn't have to raise the volume, but I intentionally did that to get them through. 
that's a neat place where you can use Dixie Grand, and it happens all the time. The dancers will flop a little bit the first time, then they'll be all set. Okay. We're, thank you very much for the score. Oh, yeah. oh are you going to volunteer to do this? Uh, are you going to volunteer like what she was doing? Oh, oh okay. Okay, right. cool. Yay. All right, stay put, Square. All right, turn around. You only thought you were going to have dinner. So what we have, we have three and Oh, yeah, I realize that. We have three and one lines with the end facing in, the other three looking out. Go ahead. Resolve to a left aisle of man. Go the whole way. Oh. All the way. Yeah. You're tough, Ed. <laughs> Center's partner trade. In the line. Uh, oh, I can't do that. Ah, oh, that's right. Ooh. I dug myself now, a what, hole. <laughs> but I gave you the answer when I was talking before. What did I, what did I say? Yeah. Anytime you have a line that you want to get, want to get normal, what do you do? Right. Half tag the line. Well, I... Mine was tag the line. Theirs was half tag. Either one is okay. Okay. Now okay. I've got right-handed way. Now you're all set. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Boys run around the girls. Girls trade. Couples circulate. Ferris wheel. Centers pass through. Left Alaman. That's good. That's very good. Now, did you see, though, as he was doing that, he had the exact same setup as as the half tag face right pass through right and left grand, except the match couple was a secondary couple, not the primary couple. That's the beauty of this. It it works no matter who's matched, whether it's the primary or the secondary. But that was good, very good. Okay, we're coming down just about out of time, so uh, thank you to the square. Well, I hope you thought this crazy idea was a little bit valuable for you folks. Um, if we, we don't have the opportunity to learn from each other on this basis a lot of times. And I appreciate very much those callers that allowed me to strong arm them up here to start this process so that we could share what it is we actually see. Um, we appreciate your attendance very much. Have Nice hand for our panel. We have Ed Foote, John Jones, and Barry Clasper, and myself. Have a great rest of the convention.